This is a video about homeostasis. Homeostasis is a process by which a body's internal environment is kept stable in spite of changing conditions. It involves negative feedback. And although that sounds like a bad thing, it's in fact a very good thing because what this means is that there's self-correction going on and this helps maintain ideal conditions. Homeostasis involves a stimulus and a response. And we'll take a look at the general model here to see how this works. Different bodily functions occur within a normal range, be it a normal body temperature, a normal blood pressure, normal hormone levels. And if they begin to stray out of the range, either too high or too low, this creates a stimulus to some sort of a receptor or monitor. And that message that we're out of the normal range is conveyed to a control center which is going to act based on that information. If the stimulus is too high, it'll send a message to an effector to try to act to stabilize the system. If the stimulus is too low, the message will go to an effector to try to stabilize the system as well, but perhaps by other means. Let's take a look at a familiar example. Let's say the speed limit is 25 kilometers per hour and we want to stay within that normal range, but we get distracted and we find that our speed is actually straying beyond 25, it's up to 27. We would detect this change, hopefully, and a message would be sent to the control center of the brain and the brain would act accordingly and in this case because we're speeding the brain would send a message to the foot to ease off on the gas pedal and slow the car down and hopefully that would return the speed back to the normal sort of conditions or the normal level and as long as we don't stray out of that level the monitor won't be sending a message to the control center. But suppose that we are moving along and we slow down to the point where we're actually below the speed limit. The receptor would again detect the change and send a message to the control center and this time the control center would send a different sort of message but still to the foot and this message would be to press down a little bit more on the accelerator so that the car will speed up and move a little bit faster and get back into that normal range. So from this we can see that there's constant monitoring of the system to see that it's working within normal operating conditions and there's constant adjustments to stay within that normal range. Let's take a look at another familiar example and think about the temperature in your house and how it's maintained at a constant temperature in spite of changing conditions outside that might have an effect on your home on the inside. If it's a cold winter day or perhaps a warm summer day, the temperature in your house can be maintained at a constant temperature. So let's take a look at how this might work. Let's say you set your thermostat to 22 degrees Celsius. That's normal room temperature and it's comfortable. But suppose it's a really, really hot day and the temperature begins to creep up just because the air temperature outside is pretty warm and so the temperature is beginning to rise and it actually rises past the threshold where it's no longer at the desired or normal range. Your thermostat, which is set to the desired temperature, would make note that the temperature has begun to creep out of that normal range and it would basically send a message to another part of itself, its control center, which would then act on that and it might do something like shut down the furnace. And it'll shut down the furnace for however long it takes for the temperature to get back into that normal range. Now on a really hot summer day, it might actually also take more action. If you have an air conditioner, it might actually also get the air conditioner working. But at any rate, the point of this is to stabilize the system and bring the temperature back down to where our thermostat was set. On a cold day, if the temperature begins to creep below 22 degrees Celsius, the thermostat would also note that and it would send a message to the furnace and, and basically be telling the furnace to turn on so that the temperature can be brought back up to 22 degrees Celsius. So what we're seeing is that normal range of temperature is being maintained because of constant monitoring and constant feedback and when the stimulus gets out of the normal range, the response kicks in and something is done to bring it back into the normal range. Let's take a look at how this might work in the human body. 
Let's look at temperature again. And in the human body, the ideal range is somewhere in the area of 37 degrees Celsius. And suppose that we go to a nice tropical vacation. Temperature of the air is a lot warmer than what we're used to. Our body temperature begins to creep up and it feels pretty warm. What temperature receptors in our skin would take note of this and send a message via nerves to the brain, a specific location called the hypothalamus, and the hypothalamus would act upon this by actually causing our sweat glands to open up and release some fluid so that we would have some evaporative cooling and hopefully reduce the temperature a little bit. It would also send messages via nerves to the muscles uh, around our skin blood vessels. It would cause them to dilate, that is expand, so that more blood actually comes closer to our skin and some of the heat that's in our core can actually be released to the environment. We should actually maintain that ideal range. Now, the opposite can also happen because we can also get too cold. And if we get too cold, the temperature receptors in our skin again would note that, send a message to the hypothalamus, and this time the hypothalamus in our brain would send a different message to the muscles of our skin. It would actually cause them to start to shiver. It might actually cause them to contract, to cause our hair to stand on end, which would cause more air to be trapped near our skin, keep us a little bit warmer. And it would also cause the blood vessels in our skin to constrict so that they actually bring less blood closer to the surface of our skin and therefore we would lose less heat to our environment. The combined effect of this would be that it would hopefully help to maintain our body temperature within the normal range of 37 degrees. Now we're also conscious of cold and this might also elicit some conscious behaviors where we might go to put on a sweater or to seek out a warmer location. So at any rate, again this is a negative feedback situation because it's correcting the situation. As soon as we start to slip out of that ideal range, action is taken to counter that. Now, sometimes the brain isn't involved in a feedback mechanism and in fact any mechanism that is self-correcting can be called a homeostatic mechanism and a very simple example of that is maintaining proper thyroid hormone levels. The thyroid gland produces the hormone thyroxin which is responsible for maintaining proper levels of chemical reactions within our body. In fact, it controls our metabolism. And the thyroid gland itself is controlled by the pituitary gland, which is a tiny pea-sized gland in our brain, uh, sometimes known as the master gland, because it actually has control over other glands. And the way it controls them is through hormones. The pituitary gland secretes a hormone called thyroid-stimulating hormone, dumps it into the bloodstream, and when thyroid-stimulating hormone levels go up, the effect on the thyroid gland is to get it to release some thyroxin. And so when thyroxin levels increase in our blood level, they increase to a point and then they reach a threshold. And when they reach a particular threshold, negative feedback occurs and the pituitary gland drops the amount of TSH. And when it does that, the thyroid gland takes note of the TSH and it's getting a signal now to release less thyroxin, so thyroxin levels drop off. When they drop off to another threshold, the lower threshold, basically the, the pituitary gland will kick into action again. So if we have a very narrow range of acceptable levels of thyroxin in our blood and those levels begin to creep up, then the pituitary gland will actually stop stimulating the thyroid gland so that the level of thyroxin can go back into the normal range. And if the thyroxin levels begin to drop off out of the normal range beyond the threshold, then the pituitary gland will kick in and it'll produce more TSH, which will stimulate the thyroid gland to produce more thyroxin. And as a result, the level of thyroxin actually remains pretty constant within a very narrow range. This is a self-correcting mechanism, it's ongoing, the monitoring is constant, and the response to any change is also constant. So we have a lot of mechanisms like this in our body that help us to maintain homeostasis, proper levels of hormones, proper temperature, proper blood pressure, appropriate heart rate for the activity that we're involved in, and these functioning mechanisms are what keep us alive and if they don't function basically the result is death. 
So that brings us to positive feedback, which is usually not a very good thing. Positive feedback is also called a vicious cycle. And it's, it's called this because, in fact, instead of correcting the situation, it actually exacerbates it. It makes it worse. So if we think about the temperature control example, you know, the temperature begins to creep a little bit too high. The temperature receptors are supposed to take note of that. The hypothalamus is supposed to cause cooling by causing the muscles around the blood vessels in the skin to dilate and the sweat glands to produce sweat but instead of doing that it might actually cause the opposite it might actually cause shivering and those blood vessels to constrict and what that would do is it would actually cause even more heating it would make it worse and in fact this is what happens when people get heat stroke and it's a very dangerous situation because the person's body temperature is creeping further out of the normal or ideal range and it needs to be treated to bring the body temperature the core body temperature back into the ideal range and you've probably heard of hypothermia and this is where all of these activities have been taking place to basically bring the body temperature back into the normal range when a person is too cold the conditions in the environment are so extreme that the person starts getting colder and colder and so the temperature receptors send a message to the hypothalamus but the hypothalamus perhaps because of the cold begins to act illogically and it will send messages to the muscles in the skin but they're the wrong messages again where it might actually cause dilation of the blood vessels which would cause even more heat to be lost and perhaps even some perspiration and this would just cause the body temperature to go even lower and out of that normal range and away from 37 degrees Celsius and again this is an emergency situation and it needs to be corrected so you could probably agree that most positive feedback uh, situations are actually not positive at all they actually are quite harmful and usually do result in death there are only two situations that I can think of where positive feedback would be a good thing and the first one would be in urine formation in urine information positive feedback helps to concentrate the fluids that are removed from the blood so that only wastes are being removed and the water is actually being returned back into the bloodstream and we'll learn more about that when we do excretory system the other situation where positive feedback is a good thing is during childbirth during labor where the hormone oxytocin actually causes the uterine muscles to contract forcefully and the more forcefully they contract the more oxytocin is produced and usually if you think back to the TSH and thyroxin uh, example uh, that might cause the hormone to drop off and stay within a normal range but in this mechanism actually the more contraction you get from the uterus the more oxytocin gets produced and the stronger the contractions become which causes more oxytocin to be released which causes even stronger contractions and that's basically what leads to the baby being born that's an example of uh, positive feedback where it's working to actually produce desired results. In most cases, positive feedback is actually a very, very bad thing and results in death. Okay, so that's your overview of homeostasis and we'll see many homeostatic mechanisms as the course progresses.